welcome to another Monday live stream with me. My name is Shane Olson. Welcome, welcome. Um, <clears throat> so this is part three of this snail guy creation by uh, Shafi. Um, today we're going to be creating the ant friend, the little, the little kid next to him, like wondering what the stories this guy has to say. So, um, yeah, so let's get to it. I hope you guys can hear me okay. This is kind of a temporary setup. I'm still in the middle of like redoing my, my setup. So this is going to have to do. Hopefully we're, uh, we're working. Hey, what's up, Neil? Welcome, welcome. Okay. So let's see here. Move this cord. Hey, Darable, how's it going? Welcome. You can hear me fine. Okay, great. Great, great, great. All right. So this is where we left off. Um, and I kind of want to start adding all these little paint details into the little pieces and parts and then build this ant guy. So let's start. I think I'm going to work on the ant today. So let's hide. Well, I, I want to put all this stuff in a folder and name it snail. Let's see. So this is a live boolean. Oh, this was the that's right. Okay, so I'm going to delete all. We're done with that coffee cup. Delete this one. <clears throat> now a trick that um, I didn't know for a long time was if you have the, uh, what Paul Gabry likes to call uh, pizza boxes showing, and then you make a folder it's gonna grab everything that's showing and stick it in that folder. So if I just hit Control F right now to make a folder, it's only gonna put the single object that I currently have selected, the single subtool, into that folder. But if I have everything showing, I, it'll it'll grab everything. So, um, and I can also do that with like all of his pieces and parts. I could put all of those in a different folder. So let's try that. Let's uh, experiment here. Okay, now. If we turn on pizza boxes, I usually like to just clear my selection. Whoops. Like this. Okay. So when I clear my selection by hitting control shift and dragging, that will make everything look transparent like, like so. Um, so if you hold down command or sorry, control plus shift and start selecting pieces, it's gonna start adding those pieces to my selection, like the body, the teeth, the tongue, everything that's part of the snail itself. Um, I wanna be active, okay? So now all of his accessories are still transparent, but um, the, you know, all the pieces that I want in a folder are not trans, they are opaque. So if I hit Control F, it'll give me this, uh, this warning saying several of the visible subtools are currently active or activated for the multi transpose. Would you like to create a new folder of containing or for of containing these subtools? And I want to say yes. Okay, so it's going to grab everything that's showing and put them all in uh, one folder. Let's just call this snail. Check that out. So now we have folder. And if we hide and show that's the snail, it looks like Oh, it must, I must have the, uh, the mustache selected. Okay, so now um, I can do, I can select all the opposite and put those in a folder. So let's clear this out and then select all of the accessories. So all of these pieces and then do it again, Control F, yes. Um, accessories, there you go. And those are all in a folder now. It looks like it. Did. Okay, it looks like it did leave the mustache out of the snail folder. I must not have had it selected. We can just drop that right in there. Let's turn this off. Okay, there's that. There's that. 
Oh, looks like the internal pieces I didn't select for uh, inside the 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 knapsack thing. The the bed the bedroll, as it were. So I'm gonna put that in accessories. Not sure why I pulled that out. And then these two eyebrows I don't need, and I don't need this block out anymore. So I'm gonna delete this. Delete this. I'm just cleaning up my scene so I can build the ant oh it crashed gosh dang it perfect <laughs> goodness what did I do to make it crash hello hello yeah okay I don't know if it saved it or not let's see Last bit I saved. Probably is not in folders, is it? <laughs> no. Gosh dang it. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, we all have we all run into these problems occasionally. That's okay. Let's just delete these right now. Kind of strange that this mustache. Oh, it looks like there's two of them. There we go. So I don't want this one. Hey, Charlie, how you doing? Thank you. Okay, so what is this? Oh, that's teeth. Okay. Teeth, tongue, body, body, body. These eyebrows I don't need. I'm going to delete them now. And eyelids. And all. Where's this block? Okay. Delete this. Now I'm going to save it before we do the folders. Should have done that before, shouldn't I? Always save your work, people. <laughs> All right. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Open this up. Clear my selection. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, let's do this again. This, 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 this. Mustache, tongue, that's everything. Yes, snail. When I'm not describing it, it goes a lot quicker. This time I'll grab the interior there. Hopefully get everything. Yes. Okay, and then we'll save it. There we go. That was much easier. Sometimes doing it the second time just goes much cleaner, faster. <clears throat> okay, so now we can hide both of these parts and start fresh with the, oh, I got to load his uh, texture back in. I've got removed when we did the, when we had the crash there. Capacity. Okay, we're going to focus on this little ant guy. So I'm going to grow him like this. And just kind of park him right there. Super cute little guy. Look at him. Look at him go. Okay. Turn on the floor and I'm going to append a, an object. I don't care what the object is, just so I have a new object that's not inside any of those folders. 
And then what I can do is I can hide the other two folders, which will hide everything on the snail. And then as long as you have your gizmo showing like this, um, you can grab an insert multi mesh brush and replace the object with whatever you select in your insert multi mesh, like this sphere. So this sphere is a much less dense sphere and um, it's, it just works better. So for, for my needs, hey David. Okay, um, so now that I have this here, I don't need to uh, show my gizmo anymore so I can hide it, all right. Um, this will be his head and then we'll duplicate that down, make a little tiny body. And then he's got these, the smallest arms and legs ever. And he's got this, another part of his body that's kind of long and skinny and small like this. So let's go ahead and lean that forward. And then I'm gonna do an auto groups. And that will put every every separate object into its own group here oops there we go i'm still trying to get used to the hotkeys between because i've been using a, a mac and the hotkeys for the mac are different and it, i get totally thrown off when i come back to this i'm on my pc right now um and i just get totally thrown off i'm just like wait a minute what's what does what again I get so comfortable with the way I work and then I go opposite and it throws me off. Okay. So how are you guys doing today? What are you working on? Anything good? Okay, so now I'm gonna pull his mouth in. This is like, I wanna say, uh, Second verse, same as the first. <laughs> so making this and is a lot like making the snail, but it's just different shapes. I want those arms and legs being so skinny. A little baby bucket head. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. Okay, so I'm just trying to decide how I'm gonna do this. Um, this head, I want more resolution. So I can increase resolution overall just by adding one subdivision level. I'm just going to hit Control D, and that gives me one real subdivision level, even though I have dynamic turned on. So essentially, now I have one real subdivision level and three fake ones, but you don't want to mix the two uh, because ZBrush just doesn't like, like that. Um, so it's best to delete lower, which will increase my resolution. Hey, what's up, Matt? Working on an old scope today. I'm gonna create, oh, nice. Pose and print him, that's always fun. <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. I don't know what his neck is doing. But now that I have more resolution, I can essentially grab my move brush and start to just pull the mouth in. And I can either mask it or just, just pull it in. doesn't matter. I'm going to end up remeshing this anyway. Whoops. Looks like I don't have symmetry turned on. Let's try that again. Okay. And I think I do want to mask this mouth off. Something like that. You know, and one trick you can do too is um, there is this option called where is it at did I pull it out of my let's see edge loop it's called edge loop mask border and as long as you have a mask down you can hit this edge loop mask border and it does something like this so it'll put a new border around your whatever you have masked, right? And then you can clear your mask and then do a 
polished by features and that will polish out those uh those jiggies that's a that's a word right jiggies <laughs> anyway um so now we kind of have this this mouth shape that we can um we can extrude back inside so we can do uh extrude this is the um z modeler brush by the way hover over a polygon hold down spacebar hit extrude and we want to select poly group all and that will take this entire mouth and push it in like this push it in once that'll give us kind of our lip edge push it in again and that will start to give us our mouth interior and then we can take this purple kind of mess as it were and then just mask it off and then just push that in completely by hand if we want to smooth it out so i'm just i just masked off that that piece and i'm basically pushing it in smoothing it out just so i can get past this uh, mess that it's making Let's turn down the smooth intensity so it doesn't push in so fast. Turn subdivisions off for a second. Just trying to clean that up. That'll work for now. <clears throat> and then we can start to shape his head a little better. So I hope you all are enjoying your Monday. Um, it's raining here, which is nice. I live in a desert, so water is always welcome. <laughs> Smooth this out. I think I want to push this mouth in. Another thing you can do is kind of clip the mouth. Um, what I mean by that is, see how it's like this is pushed way forward. Um, and I want, I, I kind of want a mouth cavity in there, not, not whatever this is. So uh, let me just rework it with, a remesh. I'm going to um, split the head away from the body. So split hidden. I can just hide the body and split hidden. And now what I can do is duplicate this head because we're going to just try a Z remesh on it and hide the original. And then um, with what I was going to say by clipping this, you can just mask off the um, inside get this clip curve brush and then just run clip along here that would be opposite though it's going to take everything on the faded side of the line and push it up to the line so i'm going to push it a little bit back here and see what it does there we go okay so it pushed it all the way back and made it flat um, because that uh, clip curve brush respects masking which is really nice and now I can um, put my gizmo in the middle, whoops, right here, and then scale this down. And yes, it's going to make this these really long polygons, but I'm hoping uh, the Z remesher will fill those up and make it clean and nice. So we'll see how this does. Um, and I could give this edge loop. Well, let's try that. I'm going to give this edge loop a, a different polygon, a uh, poly group color. So then I can make, I can kind of tell Z Remesher where to go. But I, I think this is too thin. So I'm going to go um, hover over an edge this time and say slide edge loop complete. And grab this and just slide it inwards a little bit just to give it a little more room. And then do select lasso down control shift over an edge and tap it which will hide that ed that loop ring invert the selection which will just show that loop 
hit control W a couple times till I get a color I like. And there we go. Okay, so now with this, let's try it. Let's do a Z remesh with uh, keep groups on. I'm gonna stick with 5,000, we'll see what we get. It's probably gonna, yeah, not too bad. It's really, really high resolution though. So let's do half now. I learned this from Joseph Drust. Start high with your Z remesher and, and go low. Let's do it again. It's, it's cool because it's kind of giving us these circles for his eyes and stuff. You know, I could live with that. That's good. That's good. Let's move this out a little bit. And then I can turn on my subdivision levels. And we can shape his head a little bit better. <clears throat> kind of bring these sides in. Bring this forward. So I'm looking at this silhouette here. You guys are awfully quiet today. What's going on? Usually you're a bunch of jabber monkeys. <laughs> just watching okay just making sure you're all here you're just enthralled <laughs> i'll take that Um, now his mouth does feel quite big, so because it's kind of it's kind of cocked to the side here, um, but the the corner is lifted clear up by his eye on this side. I don't know where where it's disappearing off to on the other side, but I want to make sure the mouth is kind of going around the teeth. Joe, no, oh man, I'm sorry. I know that this is cleaning me up. Mm. Oh, geez. <laughs> hey, heck, how you doing, man? Volume's a bit low. Uh, maybe try rebooting on, on, uh, here, let me see if I can crank it. How's that? Is that better? In the zone. Awesome. Still no one, buddy. <laughs> oh, geez. So one thing I have to say about the Embody versus the regular Herman Miller, I can't remember the name of it, the mesh one, is um, the one that I have is kind of hot. It Especially, you know, I... I mean, a desert hot, it gets up to 110 degrees here and it can get really hot. I do, I had the mesh version at Disney and I do miss that. So yeah, the Aeron, the Aeron. Um, so if I were to purchase another, if I were to do it again, I might consider that a little heavier because of its um, breathability. Yeah. So something to consider. This one is is more solid, so it doesn't breathe as well. It's better it's better constructed for your back, but it doesn't breathe as well. So if that's uh depending on where you live. Looking forward to that new Ninja Turtles Pixel Art. I don't think I've seen that. Sounds awesome though. Oh geez, dude. Yeah, I would I would I would invest. Doesn't sound fun at all. Yeah, the cushion's great. 
Um, you know, one thing that's really unique about this one is, I wish I could show you, it has these handles that are up near your legs. So if you ever have like um, blood flow issues in your legs or support issues or whatever, you can grab those handles and they click forward and back. So essentially the, the seat part of your chair can extend forward or backwards. I've never seen that in a chair ever, except for this one. Quite unique. I like it. <laughs> it's like a Muppet. And it's funny when you get eyes this big, they always, in intrude down into the, the mouth cavity. Shredder's Revenge. Give it a look when you get a chance out this week, I think. Oh, nice. So is it like the old four-player arcade game? Is it like that, where it's like, uh, yeah, that stand-up arcade game? That was one of my favorites. That and like uh, Simpsons. And uh, there's a Marvel one too, I think. Okay, I'm going to split this off. Switch for chair. I have the air on. And a notable, a noble gaming chair. Okay. I use the gaming chair more for the back support. Interesting. Yeah, this one looks like a, it looks like a spine in the back of here. I always tell people if you're, you know, if you're, if you're serious about, doing office work for a living then you should invest in in two things a good set of headphones because you're going to wear them all day long more than anything you have and then a good a good chair because it's gonna the, the the cost you pay for a good chair you're you're going to recoup in not having doctor bills <laughs> if you're from the u.s that is the grand old healthcare system. Made by fans of the old arcade beat-em-ups with modern scalable difficulty. If you're one or six, ooh, that sounds fun. Nice. Always wanted a, a like a meme machine. In my, I don't really have a gaming room, but in my room that has my games in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, sit, stand, desk. Yep, that's what I have, Tyler, is I have an uplift desk. I've, that's a key component, too. Um, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And speaking of which, I just, <laughs> I just got a new top for mine. I've had this uplift desk for years and years. Um, and I have this really heavy 27 inch Cintiq. It just weighs, I don't even know. It weighs more than 50 pounds, I think. But it, it made my desk sag like an old horse. <laughs> and so I, I invested in, well, I just went to, I, I've seen some other desk tours that people do. Um, I might do a desk tour eventually when I get all set up, but, um, that where they use a countertop from ikea it's like a solid wood countertop and i just got one of those and it's really nice looking and what i like about it is it's narrow like it's not deep and it's wider than my old desktop so it's um i have more usable space because you don't really use the back of your desk that much unless you have something that's you know i i just don't have anything that that i need the depth for but I do need the width, so it's nice. It's been nice, and I'm trying to get that set up. I'm actually trying to run a dual system, like a, a PC-Mac hybrid system where I can switch back and forth because I teach people on Macs and I teach people on PCs, and there's um, some other software and things that are, are only on Mac that I want to teach, and so I want to do hybrid stuff. 
Yeah, Tyler, it's it's really nice. It works well. The only thing is, it's it's and it's a countertop. It's not a desktop. They call it a countertop. So, um, oh that that turtle game will be on Game Pass. Awesome. I have Game Pass. That's cool. So, um, what I was gonna say is the the countertop is thicker, so it's about twice as thick as the 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 typical tops that come with the uplift desks. So um, the accessories don't, some of them fit, but some like my headphone holder uh, by Sennheiser, it doesn't go, it doesn't go deep enough. <laughs> so I have to use a different one. <laughs> anyway, yeah, third world problems, right? First, first world, that's what I'm trying to say. First world problems. I don't know the sayings. I feel like Biff from Back to the Future. Not liking how how wide I made this mouth. Took it too far. Butcher block countertop from Lowe's. Yeah, um, you know, that's kind of what started the whole thing is I got these these husky um there because I ha I do a lot of 3D printing. Hey Emmanuel. Um because I got a uh I have some printers and I I wanted kind of some toolbox ish things and you can get these these husky toolbox things at, at uh Home Depot. And they have like a maple top on them, and they're just they're just really strong and sturdy. And so I got this light maple top for my desk that matches those, and it matches pretty good. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty uh pretty happy with them so far. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna get those the teeth and stuff in there. It always looks w really strange without the teeth. It's kind of tall too. Oops. The cakester. Yeah, it's like a Muppet or a Sock Puppet or something. Bring it a little, shape it a little better here. Not liking the shape so far. If he needs a bigger forehead, more space between his eyes. Hey, what's up, Ian? How you doing, man? So, Ian, do you uh, do you stream on Sundays anymore, or is it just Tuesdays? Have you completely switched your schedule around? <laughs> Working and making magic. That's what you do. Nice. So if you guys don't know who Ian is, he's another uh, streamer on here. And he streams on... Oh, Wednesdays. Sorry about that. Wednesdays from noon to 2 Pacific time. There you go. Used to stream on Sundays, but now days have been switched. Hey, Vanessa, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get some teeth happening. There's some teeth. Teeth. It's like a hockey puck. Let's make them look like real teeth, though. 
I think I've shown how I usually make teeth on here before. Um, I like, I always like to say, um, you know, block out something and then delete everything that's not the whatever it is you're making, right? So for this, I start with a cylinder and I'm like, delete everything that's not the teeth. Switch to a, into a Swaycom at work and I think I dig it more than my Cintiq. Yeah, I was wondering. So I've, I've been kind of going back and forth. Just for this setup, because I need the second monitor for my live streaming, I temporarily went back to um, my Cintiq just for a second, just to have uh, the dual screen. Um, and that's kind of why I'm in this little circle down here, just because I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm in the middle of setting up my, my new setup. And my new setup, I'm on a Mac with uh, an Intuos um, tablet. And I'm with you. I kind of like it more because, well, it's just different. There's, there's goods and bads about both, right? So um, the good is your hand doesn't get in the way um, of, what's, of what's going on. And it takes up like one-eighth of the desk space, which I really, really like. And it's portable. You can take it with you if you want to go, like if, if you have a laptop or something, you can bring it with you. And I, I prefer the medium size ones, not, not the small, not the gigantic ones, but the medium size because it, it just fits on my desk well. Um, I don't need the large, it's not a bigger be is better kind of a deal. Um, now, I, I, I think bigger is better on a Cintiq because it's a screen, right? But for a, a tablet, I think the medium size is best. That's, that's just my opinion, but. Hey, Wilberth, how you doing? Um, I gotta say for blocking out, it's nice to see it all with no hand in the way. Yeah, Cintiq when you want detail. Yeah, Cintiq is really great for, um, it's, it's, a, it's a one to one. So there's not a, there's not a separation. Um, so you're not like, you know, it's, it's, I feel like you're telling someone where to go when you're on a tablet, you know, rather than a one-to-one, -one, it's, it's, it's just kind of a separation. But when you're on a Cintiq, what I like to tell people is it's good for accuracy, right? It's good for, like, if you're going to do a nice curve that goes from um, light pressure to hard pressure to light pressure again, you can usually get that in one, in your first try right? But if you're doing it with a tablet, it could possibly take you two or three times to get it right. You can still do it, but since there's that disconnect, it may take you a couple times. Um, Thomas, I don't know about that. I asked Paul, but he's, he was going to look into it and I haven't, I haven't heard back yet. Let's see. But I would assume so because now ZBrush, it utilizes CPUs. So the more CPU cores that you have, um, the better ZBrush will perform. And so if you get one of those new M1 Max with all the cores, then it's gonna do better, right? So. I love my mouse with go faster. <laughs> funny, funny Neil. Okay, let me turn on double so we can see what we're doing here. Yeah. as. Neil brings up a good point. You don't you don't want to use a mouse to sculpt with. You can use it. You can use a mouse to do mouse things with, you know, like retopology and things like that. But I would avoid it if you need to do anything with any pressure sensitivity. Because mouse mice don't have pressure sensitivity. It's either on or it's off. Okay, so hidden. Now we have teeth and we can just turn on dynamic, add some thickness. Now we have teeth. I want to do uncrease all, turn off post subdiv. I just like the softer look on these and the blue and the poly groups. <clears throat> yeah, Ian, there's, there's nothing, I mean, you don't, I don't say avoid um, um, using a mouse completely. I'm just saying don't use a mouse for sculpty type things. You know, like if you, again, if you want to go from like a light sense, of, like a, if you're doing a stroke, you know, like a round, uh, like say an eyebrow, for example, and you want to go from super light to very 
crisp to light again. You can't do that. You can't do that with a mouse. It's impossible. You just can't. It's like, like I say in my earlier streams, it's like driving a car with a toggle switch. It's not the smartest thing to do, right? <laughs> I use a mouse on call, but <laughs> but to, yeah, to each their own. If you want to use a mouse, you need to go for it. Okay, we can just duplicate this for the bottom teeth. And that head, it's got a lumpy head, I gotta fix it. Lumpy headed kid. Get a backache when I use a tablet sometimes. Um, I've heard that, I've heard that um, the opposite. So I've heard people say a Cintiq makes their back hurt, so. I keep hitting the Windows key. There go. Just wanna wrap this around the teeth better. <clears throat> And I'm going to squish these eyeballs up because they're driving me crazy. Get out of there. <laughs> Use a mouse for the menu. There you go. Again, I'm saying do 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 whatever feels right to you. Uh, that's just my advice. It's just my advice. <laughs> it looks like he's going nah, like his lips are all tucked underneath, like uh, <laughs> Jim Carrey does with the fireman Bill or whatever. <laughs> Need to do that. Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> if I created a stylized character concept, would you potentially sculpt it during a stream, or do you only do friends concepts? Um, I only do concepts that um, inspire me. That's why, and, and I don't want to mix it with, um, like, work at all. That makes sense. Like, I don't, this is my fun time. So I don't want to do it for money or anything like that. So I just pick, I just pick concepts that inspire me so i don't i don't i don't take requests is basically what i'm saying <laughs> sorry about that hope you can understand and a lot of people get a, a false sense of what it takes um to do these models because you know when i'm doing them for fun and i, I choose the i choose specific uh designs because I know they won't take as long as like a like a production model um, and it kind of I kind of do myself a disservice because people think that's how long it takes to make these like for a real in real production and it takes much longer so they're like you only took an hour to make that on your live stream why are you quoting me two days or whatever. <laughs> Gosh. 
This guy's looking like Ngi. <laughs> yeah, I think if I started doing that, I'd get uh, too, kind of too many requests and I don't want to let people down. You know what I mean? I don't want to say, I don't like saying no. <laughs> Oh goodness, how's that? Man, the corner of his mouth just too much. <laughs> Cake decoration, kind of, kind of, sorta. Very creepy cakester. This is definitely, definitely, definitely in the Valley of the Suck right now. Is what we like to call it. That's that's a, a Ryan Ryan Kingsland term. I might have to redo his head because this isn't working out at all for me. <clears throat> He's got a really unique head and really unique. Um, direction like yeah it's it's cheated how's that it's very cheated and to like this side of the mouth does not match this side of the mouth it's it's very so I might have to redo it anyway but look at the snail <laughs> uh. Snail's working. Yeah, this is the snail I've been working on. I'm trying to make the little, the little, the little ant friend. So there's the snail uh, concept. I'm just trying to make his little buddy and his head is not turning up very well yet. So let's try it again. Sometimes you just kind of have to, I don't start over very often, but sometimes you have to. Thanks, Ian. All right, I need to, I need to run to the restroom really, really fast. I drank too much. One second, I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, Brad. How you doing? Okay. Much of this awesome smoothie my wife made. Where was I? Okay. Ant. Let's try and see if we can get this ant looking more adorable instead of less scary. <laughs> so again let's see where we're at with this let's save it <laughs> look at this creepy head creepy headed kid let's 
Okay. <laughs> Let's start over with this head. Shouldn't take too long. Here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, reset this. Yeah, yeah, but I need to get that. I need to get this head shape correct, and it's not. It's I'm trying to fight it. I need to just embrace and just kind of figure it out better. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Split this off. That's looking better. See already. <laughs> Round head. Okay. So let's get this shape. It's got, I want to do kind of this scooped front. <laughs> Ship it. Has this brow, this curved brow, and this scooped out front, and then these big cheeks. He's looking mad. <clears throat> these eyes are too close together. Let me just hide them for a minute. squish the bottom up like this that's better let's hide these teeth this is a great example of taking the time to get the base shape correct before cutting in details I, I jumped ahead too quickly without absolutely making sure that what was happening was correct. And you don't always know what's correct, right, when you're modeling this stuff. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta start over. If it's not working, um, rather than like trying to keep pushing and trying to make what's broken work, it's sometimes just better to start over. And sometimes you'll get new, what do I say? New enlightenment <laughs> when you're, when you start over, you're just like, oh, I, now I see something that I didn't see before and something that's working I didn't see before. And, um, you kind of try and take a different approach, a different angle. Like this time I'm giving him more of a, an eye cavity. And I'm looking at where his mouth should be compared to these eyes. He's already feeling better. Like I'm defining the, <clears throat> the space between the eyes and how far up it should come. Okay. It's it's kind of it's it's weird too because it's kind of a when you're live streaming it's a bit embarrassing sometimes when you feel like oh man I got to start over or if you're if it crashes or something like that you want to you want it to work out you know perfectly as if you're doing a cooking show you know you don't want to burn the turkey <laughs> but sometimes you burn the turkey it's inevitable and that's okay and as an instructor, 
I kind of wish the turkey would get burnt more often so I can show you how to fix it. <laughs> okay, but I'm still gonna add more resolution to this guy. So subdivide it once. Get rid of the lower subdivision levels. Burn the turkey. <laughs> Thanks, Ruben. <clears throat> okay, so now I can tell that these eyes need to be in a different location. And hopefully they don't stick together. They might. I might have to make new ones. Nope, they don't. It's so weird. Sometimes they'll stick. And sometimes they won't. And I don't know. They stick less often these days. <laughs> Ever being too attached to the projects helps, helps me so much. Yep, love sculpting. Have to be honest if it's not working. Absolutely. How does, does uh, Kenny Rogers say? You got, how he says, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. No one to walk away, no one to run. <laughs> don't want to do a happy Gomer moment. <laughs> Why don't you look like the concept? Yep. It's one of my favorite movies. Don't you know that's your home? Okay, this is feeling better already. I remember seeing original comic art and realized they use whiteout on certain areas. I always thought it was always done perfect. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. Okay, let's see if we can give him a brow line. Brow lines always help. Smooth that in a little bit. That mouth is so close to his eyeball, I don't think I can pull that off in 3D and make it look believable. I tried and it just looked like creepy. Creepy son. And his head is flatter. I like the bugs in Bugs Life, the ants in Bugs Life. They're they're quite appealing. I just watched that the other day with my grandson. Yes, I have a grandson. I'm old guy. Maybe drop it down. Um, what's better to work with perspective on or off? I can't control my brush. I'm always picking the wrong spot. So, uh, it's a great question. My advice to you in ZBrush, specifically in ZBrush, um, I typically work with perspective turned off, but I will check it on occasion, um, but by pushing the P button just to see, and I, I don't use the default perspective because I feel like it's too much and in my custom UI at the very, very bottom, I have these camera focal distance settings and I usually use 50 or 85. So it's not pushed so fisheye. Um, I, I rarely use 35, that's even pushing it. So usually 50 or 85. And then I check it out and make sure it's looking okay in perspective. And then I go back. And the reason why is because there are a lot of uh, ZBrush tools that like clip curve, for example, that if you snap your object to the side and then you shoot a clip curve through there, it's gonna make like a diagonal angle because it takes perspective in, into consideration. Um, so I usually turn it off and I just work in orthographic all the time. And just again, occasionally check in perspective. So hopefully that helps. But if I'm in another program, I usually work in perspective. It's just very unique to ZBrush.
Okay. With his mouth, I'm just going to wait on his mouth. I'm going to get everything else going and then come back to his mouth. Sure. Also, I give away these brushes for free and my user interface for free. If you ever want to go uh, try it out, you're welcome to. It comes with my custom menu, this menu right here. It's all of my most commonly used tools inside of ZBrush. Um, I just hotkey it to number two on my keyboard and then I hotkey it to the back button on my Wacom pen right here. Um, and it just, yeah, it works out pretty good. I give those away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Just scroll down a little bit and you'll see it there. And I also teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop and I teach you how to make stylized characters like this. We have a, a great community. It's lifetime access. A lot of them, a lot of my students are here watching today, so um, they can let you know if it's any good or not. <laughs> Let's see. Drawing. Now, when you do an insert multi mesh brush, there's a kind of a hidden trick you can do is as you click and pull out and then you pushed back in. Um, they they make the arms skinnier. Have you changed the price of your course yet? What do you mean, Kickster? I have. Um, and I've also added a lot, a lot of stuff. So I, I launched my course, I think it's almost four years ago. Um, it's, uh, and I had 3D Character Workshop 1.0, which lasted for a while, and then I, I still give students access to that. And then I've, I've done 3D Character Workshop 2.0 where I do weekly challenges and that's up and available. And I also do one-off characters that you can watch me go all the way from beginning to end. I have two of those, um, one that is in work in progress and another one that's done. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I have uh, pro interviews in there. Um, there's a very, very active Discord channel and uh, student forum a while back you said you were going to increase the price i have yeah just not sure if you've done it yet because it's been a while i have kickster yep <clears throat> Be just because of the additional content i didn't raise it very much okay so these arms thanks matt Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Ian. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Super skinny arms. Let's do a uh, split on mass points. Yeah, I think the most people's students say, come for the course, stay for the community. <laughs> the community is awesome. And it's the students that make it awesome. There are so many great people in there. And what's cool about the Discord channel is uh, people like Brad like to go live in there. And so you can hang out and, and sculpt and yap with fellow students. It's a lot of cool. Thanks, Wilberth. I appreciate it. It's always, it's always rough. Like... You know, like asking what the, like just because I'm an artist, I'm, I just happen to be in the business of teaching now. Right. And it's always like, uh, there's, there's, you know, I, I just don't know the business side of it as well. <laughs> and so it's always hard for me, but the students make it a lot easier. I've been lucky, been extremely lucky to have amazing students. Thanks, Kickstarter. I try. I really, I think s streaming is my jam. I, I love it. I love interacting with other people. 
while I sculpt. And I want to do it more. I'm thinking about doing um, the YouTube membership, like those, the join button, and doing more uh, like full characters start to finish, like more detailed. But if I merge several subtools into one and then Dynamesh Utility, it always gives me much lower value. It doesn't work even if I scale the model. Um, Sahil, I don't know. Um, the, 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 the Dynamesh Utility, it should take care of that. Um, make sure, here, two things. Make sure that your export value is set to one. So if you go down to export right here, make sure that says one. And then if you go to geometry, um, you want to make sure that your entire scene, if you go to position, no, no sorry, scale. If you go to scale, look to make sure it's, it's around, it's between zero and two, right? So if it's up, if it's up higher than two, then it's really, it's not a good scale. So Unify should fix it, but I'm not sure. I don't, I don't work for Pixelogic or Maxon. I'm a volunteer here. So um, I'm just kind of telling you some advice based off of my, what I've tried in the past. So hopefully that helps. Um, but what I usually do is I start with my ruler file and the ruler file is set to exactly what ZBrush wants you to work in, the scale ZBrush wants you to be. And so this ruler right here, and if you turn on the floor, it's set to exactly the scale that ZBrush likes. So when I use ZBrush Utility, it works every, or Dynamesh Utility, it works every single time for me. Um, and if you want this ruler file, I give it away. If you wanna go get it, it's just over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and you can just, um, scale your characters to the ruler. Don't scale the ruler to the characters. So, yeah, Neil, I need to. Soon, man, soon. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Thanks, Ian. Stick legs. Man, if I want to 3D print this guy, which I'd love to, I gotta be careful with the thickness on these. <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna make the legs lighter for a minute. So I can see what I'm doing better. Lucas, um, I'm I'm actually not sure yet, but I'm su super low. I'm thinking about having a couple tiers, but yeah, like something like that. I mean, creators can set up their own tiers at different levels. I don't know if I'm going to have one or multiple, or I'm just kind of bouncing the ideas around in my head. But like five bucks a month, it's like a Patreon, you know. So you can basically, it's basically like this, but it's full characters and more interactive. And I might give away the STLs at the end so you could print it depending on the tier level, that kind of thing. Is that something you guys might be interested in? I need to gauge interest first too. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Hey Mark, sweet. I know I've mentioned it before. I just I'm I'm just hesitant to pull the trigger for some reason. <laughs> I've kind of thought about too that it might be fun to do like a 
like if I were to create a character that would go into this specific game um, and show you how I would do it. So for example, if I wanted to make a, so I've been playing this game called uh, My Time at Sandrock recently. I really love their characters, their hand-painted textures. And I'm just like, what would a character look like if, uh, you know, if I made a character for that studio? Like if I was a freelancer for that studio, um, and I could just kind of reverse engineer what they've done and try and make one. Something like that would be kind of fun. And also, you know, not everybody can afford the course. The course is, um, and I, I understand that, and I just wanna, I wanna be able to give, give more to people who can't necessarily afford that. So, and that's a, that's a, a way to do it, you know? Hey Gambit, how you doing, man? Love these little floppy feet. <clears throat> Got stuck. <laughs> You're doing Fortnite. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have a lot of friends that, that uh, work work for Epic. So I worked at a studio called Glyphics for a while, and Glyphics. Um, uh, uh, several of the people from Glyphics broke off and started this company called Chair. And um, Chair was got purchased by Epic. And so now they're making a lot of Fortnite uh, assets. And that's where my buddy Matt Thorup ended up. I have a whole bunch of friends that work there, but you guys might have seen me do a presentation, a ZBrush presentation with Matt Thorup at the ZBrush Summit. A few years ago, that's where Matt's working now. So I need to talk to that guy. I haven't talked to him forever. You great, just graduated college. Congrats. Going to spend all my time on your course. Yay, sweet. Good luck. It's greatly improved since I played a year ago in Kirkstra. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's been a long time. I, I dabbled with it, but I, I didn't get really serious with it. I've made an Overwatch character, which is similar, but um, I did, I haven't really done uh, a Fortnite character. And if you guys didn't know this, if you hover over this portion on the scale gizmo right here, See how it says hold alt to scale along X and Y? That just keeps the scale the same along whichever axis you're choosing. So in this case, it's uh, Z or Z. Um, if you hold down alt, it will shrink on the, on the other two axes without shrinking the whole thing. So I'm just gonna give him kind of these long fingers. Um, I'm I'm debating giving him a palm at all, just because he's got these such long stringy fingers. Played until I got one solo win and then got bored and went to Apex. I've not played Apex either. Has that right? Currently, net right now, I'm playing. Um, I'm playing Elden Ring with my friends. So there's a new mod that came out on PC. It's called the Seamless Co-op Mod. And they did an incredible job with it. And it allows you to play co-op with your friends. And so that's what I've been playing with a couple friends of mine. <coughs> and it makes it makes the game more fun. Uh, and I wish like Red Dead would have a similar mod for that because basically you just want to old guys like me, I guess I just want to hang out with my friends and go fishing and hunting and causing havoc in the towns and whatever else, you know, so 
I wish, yeah, I wish you could do like private servers and stuff with those games. I don't, I don't want the extra gankers and PVPers and you know everybody that comes in just gr griefers making the game not very fun. I just want to kind of enjoy what they've created and just hang out and check everything out. That'd be so fun. <laughs> you try it in real life. Well, for, well, sure, right? Sure, you could. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I would, I would. Uh, in in those games, like you know, Elden Ring, for example, it's it's nice to be able to just go as a group, go together, and decide. It's it's kind of like the closest thing uh, playing a digital D and D game, because that you really can't do in real life. You know, kill those giant ugly crazy bosses in Elden Ring together come up with new strategies and things it's just fun okay <clears throat> let's do an auto groups mirror and weld off local Wait a minute. Okay, this guy's feeling better. <laughs> Let's give him that the antenna. Much less creepy than the original, right? I have um speaking about the uh a, a YouTube join membership type thing, I have a whole bunch of characters lined up. I've had my friend Josh Black's uh, concept for me, <laughs> a lot of them, and uh, I'd love to just sculpt those while hanging out with people, you know? Could be a good time. Okay, I'm getting validation from you guys. <laughs> I need to be longer. Yeah, I need to finish that one, Neil. It's kind of looming. I got to do that first and then and then Maybe I can do both. I don't know. <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> this guy's funny now. It's amazing how simple yet cool style these characters are. Yeah, it's so, it's so, they're so fun, you know? And it's so fun, to, it's to, to build them with primitives because it's literally like rolling up balls of clay or, you know, when you're a kid, like taking clay and rolling it out into little thin strands. If you were to do this with real clay, those like, like these little strands would sag, you know? But in uh, programs like ZBrush, they they stay in place and it's a lot of fun and you can pose them and do and you can 3d print them eventually and paint them and yeah it's super fun super super fun okay <clears throat> i fear the mouth on this one hey what's up ryan yeah you totally have to use an armature yeah Speaking of armatures, I met, I can't remember the guy's name, but I met the guy who made the original armature for uh, Jack Skellington and um, Sally for Nightmare Before Christmas. Because there's a local, uh, a local stop motion studio here. There was, I don't know if it's there anymore. And they were working on a Christmas special and they hired the guy who, who made the armatures for those. 
and uh, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, you can harden the clay. I'm debating between doing creature design or stylized character concepting for a career. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can, you can trudge down both and just see where your heart leads, you know? Um, there's no shame in that either because, you know, for five years of my career, I was an animator. I got into animation really, really heavily. Um, I was a game animator and I decided because I would come home at night and I would just sculpt characters. And I'm like, why, why am I messing around with animation? I should just be sculpting characters. I have so much fun doing it. Um, and I was, frankly, I was better at it than I was <laughs> doing animation. So, um, yeah, I ended up just coming back to making characters because that's how I started too. A lot of fun. Do it, Matt. Good luck. Daniel. Did I see the Diablo 4 trailer? I haven't. <laughs> yeah, do it all. Do everything. Dude, this guy looks totally animatable though. <laughs> looks like he's uh, he'd be fun to animate. I wanted to give him hands like uh like from Ant and the Aardvark, you know. Hey Ant! That <laughs> you, the 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 fingers are just drawn like a super scribbly on his hands, and I wanted to kind of do that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. Like, do I do Mac to PC, Mac PC? Why not both? I'm doing both. Okay. We're going to try the mouth, kids. Here we go. Let's delete the atrocities that were the, was the old head. Delete. Delete. Look at that old head. Ugh. Get out of here. <laughs> it's like looking at some of your old work. <clears throat> yep. Saving it. Saved. All right. <clears throat> you know what I can do, which is fun, is use live Boolean. So let's make a new folder. Call it ant. Ant kid. There you go, ant kid. And let's draw, let's do a, oh, let's just do a spear. All right, and we'll split it off. This is gonna be our cut, cut mesh. And this is our positive and our negative. So we need to switch this over to negative and turn on live Boolean and then show, show our cut mesh. And what I wanna do is use clip curve. <coughs> We're gonna clip it into a mouth shape like that and shove it in his face. Zook. like he's biting on a bar of soap or something <laughs> and you can see look at his he's giving him <laughs> like a scared expression you can see his eyeballs up in his mouth i'm gonna i'm gonna push those even more and get him out of the way i squished him a little bit but i'm squishing him more he's so scared that i'm cutting his face don't cut my face gotta be careful not to mess up the front Okay. okay, he's like, ah. <laughs> okay, why live Boolean? Well, as as you could see from if you were if you've been here since the beginning of today, um, I was struggling with the mouth. And if you have live Boolean and you have an object like this, you can shape this ob object however you please. Like I can move this into a smile. and then just hide, and then I can look at it. <coughs> I can 
can smooth it down. I can color it. I can do everything I want. And if it's, yeah, if it's too far back, I can push it forward. If it's too lumpy, I can smooth it out. <laughs> COVID mask, totally. Yeah, that feels better. Feels like his mouth's too far down now. So, and I can clip it again. That feels better. <clears throat> Let's clip this side again, clean it up, and then I can bring it into it. This this makes it so it's very very editable. Um, non-destructive do I enjoy this yeah I enjoy it a lot it's my it's my thing it's what I love okay and I can also solo this object and you can see that what's happening it's like uh, my clip curves got a little broken back here <clears throat> can use inflate um do I ever use yeah I, I do use other programs but you're currently watching the official pixelogic slash maxon zbrush channel so I like to keep the conversation on zbrush I went too far. <laughs> I went too far. So I've been doing my cartoon mouse in the last six months or so. Yeah, it's really nice. Smooth that out. There we go. That feels better. So much better. So check this out. This is so for the ZBrush Summit. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was last year or the year before that, they had us do these little techniques. And I used a live Boolean technique showing people how to make eyeballs with uh, live Boolean. M Neil, would you mind finding that really quick and posting it? Um, and in that demo, I showed you how the live Boolean takes on the color of whatever the object is that you're cutting out. So um, the, the cut object is the same color blue as the head. Well, what I can do is I can snag the color from the mouth interior, which is this dark maroon color. And then I can fill the object and it will fill his mouth with that color. Like so. Pretty sweet. And it will have a super crispy edge. Um, and that you can smooth out later. And right now it looks like I'm moving the mesh, like the underlying mesh, but I'm actually moving the cut mesh that's hidden. So it's kind of a different way of thinking when you're when you're moving this stuff around. <clears throat> Thanks, Neil. There's the there's the YouTube how I make eyes with live booleans. I just I, I don't know why I, I just came up with that one day. I'm just like, hey, I think I think it would work if you made the iris a live boolean and then the pupil, and then you could do a a gradient tone in the iris cut mesh. That works really well. Now here's the creepy teeth. Let's get those fixed. Creepy teeth. I 
don't want to widen those. <clears throat> turn on transparency. If you turn on transparency, it will show your cut mesh as well. What's going on? Oh, cause I, okay. What? Do you remesh after doing a Boolean mesh or just keep working on it and using things like Sculptor's Pro if needed? Um, you can use live Boolean as, as alongside of uh, Sculptor's Pro. Um, but if you're using dynamic subdivision levels, that just, Beware that when you are ready to make a live Boolean mesh, like when you're ready to make it real. Um, basically, that's why I put everything in folders when I'm doing Booleans is because you can click on this little gear over here and you'll see there's two options. There's Boolean folder, which will just Boolean the folder. That means everything that's in it, it will generate a new mesh based off of all of that. It will combine it, remesh it and everything. Um, if you see this one called Boolean with subdivision, um, dynamic subdivision, that's what that stands for. DS div, that's dynamic subdivision di division. So if you, if you click on this one, it will take your dynamic smoothing into consideration and then it will do the, it will build a new mesh and it will keep it all smooth and everything. So, um, it's really nice to work with dynamic subdivisions until all the way up till the end, until you're ready to actually make a new make your final mesh but yeah i will typically keep them separate in 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 the live boolean state until i need it to uh, actually change or be be official i guess his teeth are really narrow <clears throat> usually you make the mouth like follow the teeth but in this case they're kind of following the head and it's it's hard to get a good a good balance between the two. Without them looking creepy and weird. Because then it just looks like you're pulling your mouth like this. You know, and you can see to the sides of the teeth and makes it look creepy. But if I were to push and it, yeah, it's just it's cheat it's super cheaty. So it's trying to trying to find a happy a happy place. Maybe if I push this in a little bit more. It still feels like that. <laughs> Gosh. I might have to just take these cheeks and push them in. So now I'm actually editing the, the underlying mesh, this mesh, and not the cut mesh, because I want to kind of push the cheeks in and see but they're so close to this eye that it's really difficult to uh, find a happy place. So I might just widen the teeth to compensate. Yeah, that's, that's probably the solution. Maybe I can shrink the bottom teeth, but have the upper teeth really wide. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of like flick. I was just saying earlier in my stream that um, I watched that earlier this week with my grandson. I'm going to pull this the bottom bottom one in 
That doesn't look horrible. I just have to open his mouth a little more. All right, let's give him little eyebrows. <clears throat> little eyebrows. And for that, I use the topology brush. And he just has these little teeny rectangles for eyebrows. So I'm just going to quickly draw those like this. Clean it up. Draw size one, click on the surface, and then do a split unmasked points, arrow down. And they're right here, but they're <laughs> that maroon color. Let's grab a black, well, let's, let's do a light blue just so we can see them. And then we can give them thickness. Turn off post sub dip, turn off creasing. Let's make this more triangular. And there they are. All right, we can darken them up now. Curve them a little bit. Okay, now for the eyeballs. I'm going to apply the dynamic subdivisions because I want to do um, I want to do poly paint and there's not enough resolution in these eyes to do poly paint. So I need more resolution. I'm going to hit apply. And then you can see it has uh, 12,000 active points. If I'm going to do poly paint, I usually subdivide it up to, I use control D, subdivide it up to about a million. In this case, 3 million. I can go down to 700,000, but 3 million is pretty good. And then I'm going to grab this color on this guy. Let's zoom him in here. And then uh, as long as this ring is showing, you can hit C as in cat on your keyboard and grab a color out of here. So maybe this darker color. And then with this uh, paintbrush. <laughs> oh, this guy cracks me up. Okay, maybe. This blue feels a little more purple to me. <clears throat> and I want to grab, I grabbed the wrong color here. There's a lot of colors going on. Let's try that. Just to get closer to yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay, more more of an indigo. And then let's go dark. You're not that dark. Something like that with his arms and legs. Antenna. It's it's hard because the background's so dark so let me lighten up the background so we can see them and how you do that is you change the color that you want the background to be I'm just gonna do like a medium gray and then you go to document and then click on the word back and it will change the background now we can see them now it's kinda hard to read the text and stuff like that let me go just a little darker a little darker document back there we go that's better okay and so that's just kind of a block 
blocked out eyeballs, whatever you want to call them. And with the, I usually like to do the black ring around eyeballs. Um, I'm still not liking that mouth, but I'll just have to just keep going on it. Um, let's see. Maybe if I pull out the cheeks. I'm going to commit. So I'm going to show you what happens if I commit this live Boolean. Okay. So let's do a save as. Okay. Um, now, if I want to make this a reality, whatever, I want to combine these objects and make a new one. You just click on here and click on Boolean with subdiv. Okay, and now it makes a new one. It hides the old one. It looks like it merged the eyebrows in. <laughs> That's not what I want. Because I made the eyebrows. It's part of the Boolean folder. Let me move that out. Let's delete this again. Okay. Let's try this again without the eyebrows. Okay, so now we just have the head, the mouth. Okay, head, mouth, and let's go do it again. Boolean with subdiv, there we go. And here is the new object that's been Booleaned. Okay, so now we can take this and start to mess with it without dealing with the live Boolean. I can turn live Boolean off because we don't need it anymore. Um, I could Z remesh this and keep groups. Let's try that actually just see what, what it'll give us. So I'm gonna do um, half, keep groups, Z remesher. What are some applications for doing what? Hey, what's up, Ash? Thanks, I'm building the little buddy to the snail from last week. <laughs> Do half, do half, come on, work it out. It's having issues, I'm gonna have to smooth it out. Actually, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to uh, land in a happy place between, um, whoops, um, between, the mouth being too wide and you know because this is like heavily 2d cheated i'm just trying to find a happy medium let's grab this color because i'm trying to make the mouth wrap around the teeth but the teeth are so close to the eyes i don't have enough real estate between the eyes and the mouth to make it do that so i'm just trying to tried to widen the teeth to compensate good times good problems let's give him some rounded out lips I usually go midway to the pupil because the eyes are already so huge yep <clears throat> yeah like drop down like mid mid to the pupil for the corners of the mouth i'm trying to that's what i that's like the the measurement stick right for that um but i'm trying i guess i could do that and then pull it up into that smile that's probably that's what i usually do but then i'll get all the geometry Ashley's another streamer on here, you guys. Um, she streams, I believe it's, is it after Ian? Do you, do you stream after Ian on Wednesdays? The Wednesday crew is here. All right, Ian. Thanks for stopping by, man.
tell the tell the zbrush peeps hello for me there we go there we go yeah it's so close I fight Ian for my turn on the TV on Wednesdays <laughs> I'm done. Get off the TV. <laughs> oh, hey, Leonard. I got your email. I need to respond. <laughs> but I, I picked up one of these. Can you see in my camera? Picked up one of those craft keyboards you were talking about. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. So I've been trying to go between uh, the Mac and PC with it. I've had good results and bad results, which is interesting because um, Logitech has software called Flow that allow you, allows you to flow between Mac and PC, which I didn't know. Um, and then there's also that software called Synergy that allows you to go back and forth and I've been trying to figure out which one I should be using, um, just kind of experimenting, you know. And Synergy it has an application that runs in the background. I'm, I'm sure both of them do, but Synergy has one that you can see and you're aware of, and you can turn it off and on again. Hey, Andres, um, I, right now I'm on a PC, but I'm doing a PC-Mac hybrid build. I will be eventually. This guy's working better. <clears throat> yeah, so I started with the, the Logitech Flow and the, the thing I like about that is it says it's more like universal control in the Apple where you can grab files and text and bring them back and forth between the two, which sounds like completely bon bonkers magic. But um, I was able to use the, so I have an M3 mouse as well, one of these, one of these guys and that worked really well going back and forth and like seamless just goes back and forth but the keyboard was getting left behind i could i could take the keyboard with me over to the pc but when i'd go back it would leave the keyboard back in pc land and so i'd have to click one of these uh buttons you know it has the one two and three on it so i'd have to quickly push one of those buttons not a not a game changer but um it was just kind of interesting and so I, I just was trying out Synergy, Synergy to see if it worked any better. And it, it, was, it was working pretty good, but it kept uh, hitching on the PC side because I was making my Mac the server. So it kept, the, the mouse would hitch weirdly. Um, yeah, so that's, Andreas, that's exactly why um, I'm getting into Mac land is because there's a whole bunch of reasons, but that's one of them, just the amount of cores and just how quiet it is and how streamlined it is and how I can get my uh, SMS texts over my computer, which is super nice. Um, the, I, I have some really nice headphones with it and I can go back and forth between my iPad and my Mac really easily. Um, plus there's some software that I wanna demo and teach on my uh, iPad and my Mac and stuff. So I'm just kind of slow. I've been a PC guy for my whole life, except for when, you know, Commodores were out. But <laughs> other than that, I've been like PC guy. So to even think about doing Macintosh is crazy for me, but I've been really, really enjoying it. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to get a hybrid build and I have a crazy ginormous uh, monitor coming that is, it's like called an Odyssey something. It's like a space station. And it's, it's basically the equivalent of two 27 inch monitors stuck together. And the price came way, way down on them. They used to be pretty ridiculous, but um, they're not as rid ridiculous as a Cintiq price. But what's cool is you can plug both a, a a Mac and a PC into it, and then you can split it side by side, so you can have PC on one side, Mac on the other, on the same, um, on the same monitor, and then you can 
switch it so the Mac takes over the whole thing. Like if you're doing video editing, for example, and you want to have your timeline all the way across the whole thing, or if you're on a PC and you're playing a crazy, you know, in-depth game where you want to be immersed into it because it's very curved. The monitor is really curved. Um, you can switch it over to that. So, um, yeah, it's like a whole ultra high def. Yeah. It's like a mini led or something like that. So, um, the, <clears throat> the, uh, yeah, I do believe the M one chip is enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With even the low base model with like 10 cores and 32 gigs of Ram and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's enough. I've, I've heard nothing but good things. So never makes noise. And I bought the biggest one I could with M one max 60. That's awesome. Even in emulation, it whoops my PC at ZBrush because I, yeah, yep, yep. It's, that's what I hear. Like, um, the guys over at flip normals, they just, they've been trying to kick the fans on by throwing everything they can at it. And it's just, it stays quiet. And, and do you know why it's because it's a it's a phone chip the m m1 is a is a phone chip and it's what that means is um it's it's very efficient very energy efficient it's super fast super small super quiet and super runs cool uh so it's like it's almost like Mac was hiding out, borrowing the Intel chips for those few years where they had Intel in their machines. I have I have one of those machines. Um, and while they were secretly working behind the scenes to make a, a a phone chip big enough to fight with, you know, to push like PC applications. So um, that's what the M1 chip is. It's pretty crazy. Pretty uh, revolutionary in the PC field. Combo iPad Mac Studio ZBrush is a winner. Nice. It's good to hear because that's the way, that's the direction I'm headed. Guy's cracking me up. That's a good sign. Just want to get his forehead a little taller over here. How long have I been into tech? Um, I think my whole life. I'm 50. So I've been doing character modeling for 23 years I want to say since what is 1997 ish but I've always been into computers and video games and all that junk since I was a little kid Atari 2600 Atari or uh, Commodore 64s you know all that stuff Are you using Logitech Unify receiver? Yes. Or Bluetooth? No. So one of these, yeah, Leonard, one of these little, these little guys with the orange, the orange logo, the Unify logo. Is that the right way to go? I don't even know if my PC has Bluetooth, to be honest. I thought that would be a cleaner connection doing it that way. I might be wrong. And you can scope on the go with no issue working ZBrush. Yes, exactly. Give him kind of a little pointy, pointy ant abdomen. Bluetooth cuts out. Okay, interesting. I thought I thought it might. <clears throat> hey Bane, thanks. Drop the 
back of his head more. Okay, what time we got? 56, almost done. All right. Let's color in this mouth cavity again. So we lost our poly paint whenever you Z remesh. Quick question about your course. Uh, do you know if it's possible to use your course as a way to get access to the student pricing for the ZBrush subscription? Um, so I'm not supposed to, can you email me, Gambit? Email me at shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com if you're interested in that and let me know that, that you are. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know what's up with that. So did you guys know that smoothing also works with poly paint? So if I hold down shift, you'll see that RGB is still turned on. I can actually turn off Z add and only have RGB turned on and see how I have this kind of jaggy paint across here. I can hold down smooth and just, it's like a smear and it just smears it out really nice. Now I have a nice gradient in there. All right, we can add his tongue. Let's see. Um, I was gonna, I could give him pupils. Yeah, kind of a Gaussian blur. <laughs> a little bit of a blur there. And I'll probably end up putting an, an outline around these eyes all the way around, thick on the top, see how it gets thicker on the top and then it goes to thin. Just by using the um, topology brush. This is probably the last session I'll do with this snail guy. Um, all these ant kid. I'm gonna delete these now that I'm done with them. Put all of these into the folder. Oh, did it? Okay. Need to make a new folder. There we go. Like, what happened to my folder? But if you delete everything in the folder, then the folder goes away. So. <clears throat> Sure, we got everything in there. All right, and then um, there's the accessories, and there's the snail. I can hide the kid. But essentially, what I'm going to do with the rest of this is I'm going to subdivide all of these pieces up high enough just like I did with the ant's eyes so I can then paint the details on there um, the colored details so you can see like there's some colored details on this bedroll and on his knapsack and this little bottle thing here and the little dots on his skin that kind of stuff I can just subdivide it up and then paint it on there and then I'll probably paint or I'll probably um, sculpt lines on either side of this color change on his body down here 
and that will also be in the subdivided surface detail. And then I'll combine the snail shell so there's not this weird uh, separation right here and clean that up. So anyway, guys, um, thanks again for hanging out and watching me struggle with this ant. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys got to see me uh, have to redo his head from the atrocity that, that the first head looked like. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway. Um, yeah, thanks, Ashley. Thanks, everybody. Um, if you guys want to learn more about how to sculpt stylized characters, I do teach a course, and it's called the 3D Character Workshop. It is, yeah, uh, Neil just posted a link there. And if you want this user interface, my brushes, my ruler file, I give it all away for free over on the same website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Um, you can check it out over there. And thanks everybody for the another Monday live stream. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's a fun start to my week. So thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Have a good week. Happy sculpting. See you next Monday. Cheers. We'll see ya.